Hello and welcome back to Let's Build. So we start this episode and you can see here, I'm just going around the whole map. Now that we've got the outside framed by those pretty cool cliffs, what I wanted to do was also come back to some of these mountain tops. And you can see here, I'm just throwing down some spheres, putting some snow on top and getting them looking nice and realistic. While it is a lot of fun to do just the big builds like the evil fortress or the boat, things like that, there's going to be a lot of caretaking or, you know, just janitorial work on the build, going around the outside, filling in the details here and there that aren't big ambitious builds, but it's things that need attention. And so to come back to that, what we're going to be doing this episode is building two little camps near to this village. These are kind of small builds, but they're going to bring the world to life by just enhancing the story aspect of the world that we have. So you can see me here connecting up from the village to a small little clearing that I'm going to prepare for our first lumber camp. Now for the camp itself you can see that the ground is a mix of coarse dirt and gravel and that's achieved by just using world edit and uh, when you put down a cylinder in world edit and you say okay make that cylinder gravel and coarse dirt it will randomly pick which blocks it wants to make those different blocks and that random algorithm really helps keep your build kind of looking more natural. So what does every log camp need? Well, first up, it needs a place to put the logs that have been chopped down. So you can see here, some log piles have gone up and instead of just keeping all of those log piles the same length, what I wanted to do with them is make some of the logs a bit longer and that'll kind of keep things looking a bit more interesting and not so uniform. And then I braced those logs with some mine track that kind of looks like ropes wrapping over the logs, keeping them together. I wanted to give the lumberjacks a way to get the logs back to the village. And I've never really built a proper kind of wooden cart that might be drawn by a horse. So designing that here was pretty cool. It's very small scale, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do the wheels and things. But I was very happy with the finished product and loaded it up with some wooden logs. So we have the cart, we have a small little building for our lumberjacks to work in. And we have the piles of wooden logs. What we're also going to need is a place for the lumberjacks to sleep. And I've done tents before, so I kept that similar style of just some wool in a simple V shape, inverted V. Well, it's a peaked tent, what are you going to say? With some fence posts that are kind of supposed to be the pegs around that tent. And as night falls, you can see the shaders really are doing the hard work for us. We've only got a few lanterns around here because this isn't really going to have the hustle and bustle of a city. So we want to keep it quite discreet with the lighting. I'm also very happy with how the campfire has turned out. So I've used wooden slabs around just a basic campfire item and it looks really good, especially with those smoke trails. So one camp down and one to go. We're going to do a bandit camp now and I figured the perfect place to nestle this is at the base of these cliffs over here. So again using world edit I've carved out a little clearing for us to put down the camp and then I began work on the palisades. So I saw a cool example of these on Google just where somebody had kind of tried to create a palisade effect using these cobble slabs and logs and I tried to recreate the same kind of style. You just use logs of varying heights loosely in a pattern but they've got to be a bit random as well to keep it looking a bit more natural and once I'd done a small section that I was happy with I recreated that entire look all around the edge of this camp leaving of course a gap for the main gate. and then topping them off with wooden fence posts to add a kind of like spiky effect to it. I wanted those fence posts on the gate as well and that keeps the bandit camp looking spiky and a bit more, you know, savage. And there we go, the finished palisades and front gate. Now it's time to go inside the bandit camp and do the interior. So the first building of the bandit camp, I wanted a circular kind of hut. So my inspiration for this building is, and I don't know if you've played it, but there's a game called World of Warcraft. Anyway, the orc huts in that game are super kind of savage and visceral. So I'm marrying the idea of a cobblestone hut with nether brick stairs as a roof, and then the wooden logs and fence posts to add a bit of spikiness to the top. Then I threw down a quick bonfire. Uh, however, that had some problems because the wood did burn. So I had to come back to that later and fix it.
and then using the same style of tents over at the lumber camp, I created some bandit camp tents. However, because these are a bit more, you know, kind of bandity, I use different color wools. So you see there's like a rich orange, like a British racing green, a lime green, and uh, a dark gray. I'm pretty happy with how those look. And again, recreating the campfire effect, I put down a campfire in between the tents and the bandit hut. Now, of course, these bandits, they're criminals, they're hooligans, and they're gonna need a way to make sure they see when the city guard is coming to knock on their door. So what I've done is I've created uh, one simple guard tower here. You can see I've used wooden logs and I've tried to keep it again, primitive and savage, because these are bandits. This is kind of like a thrown up structure, like a pop-up bandit camp. But when I topped the roofs off with the nether brick, I discovered that actually bracing those with wooden stairs really kind of enhanced the feel of it. So I've repeated that look on the hut behind it. And then once I was happy with one guard tower, I just copy and pasted it onto the cliff a bit higher up, a bit more of a vantage point. And finally, what does every bandit camp need? Well, a place to store their ill-gotten gains. So we've got some lapis lazuli, we've got some gemstones, and we've got some gold, as well as some chests and things, all kinds of things that you can fill with gold, jewels, and riches. And in classic bandit style, we've made sure there are skulls on the spikes on the gates. And there we go, we've got two camps now in the bag. These two really bring the world to life. The villagers have a lumber yard that perhaps services the kingdom, gets it all the wood. And as you can see, we cleared out a much bigger area of forest to make sure you know these villagers know how to chop wood. And as we swoop over to the bandit camp, you can see what we've got going on here. A much more savage and untamed style of camp. But one thing that building this camp has made me realize is that we really do need a much stronger evil presence in the kingdom and in this world. So I'm really excited to get started on my next project, which is gonna be a massive Hellgate. Think of a nether portal, but then combine it with, say, the dark portal, or like just a massive evil gateway that we can find a home for behind the evil fortress. I think it's time to really flesh out the lands of evil in this world and make sure the kingdom has something to fight against. As always, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week for some more Let's Build. Take care.